Greetings to you, my brothers and sisters. God bless you. I pray that all is well with you and your family. This is AGA, and I'm blessed to be back in the saddle again to spend another opportunity. I am blessed to come back and be with you all on another edition of Back to the Bible, where we're dealing with the issues in the music ministry. All right. I am so grateful to the Lord. I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied unto each and every one, one of you from God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to thank God for allowing me to come back together with you all far and near. And it is such a blessing. God has kept us seven days, seven more days, guys. And he allowed us to come back to be with each other one more time. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him, heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. We serve a mighty God and he is worthy of all our praise. Well, God bless you, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back. Amen. What a privilege it is. We had such a wonderful segment on last Monday, the first segment um, the first segment, the first installment, the introduction uh, on last Monday night. What a blessing it was. We had a wonderful, wonderful gathering. So many people were blessed. So many people were touched. Lives were changed. A lot of questions were answered. Um, had a lot of witnesses on the line. Thank you, Lord. But we also had some people. We also had some people like we do every Monday night. We had some people that got off the line, but all that comes with it. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you 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 have some that come, you have some that stay, you have some that leave, but you got to stay true to the assignment that God has given you. And you got to stay true to what God has told you and instruct you to do. The Bible declares obedience is better than sacrifice. Um Amen. If we be willing and obedient, we shall eat the good of the land. Amen. So I'm grateful to the Lord for a mind and a heart and a willingness to be obedient to his voice, to his instruction. And whatever he tells me to do, I'm going to do just that. And he always rewards you according to not just your faithfulness, but you got to be uh, faithful in being obedient. Uh, because it is possible for you to be faithful, but not be obedient. Okay. A lot of people are faithful. They're faithful to whatever it is. Um, you could be faithful to something that God don't want you to do or did not instruct you to do, but you're faithful in doing it. You're faithful in being present. You're faithful and you're dedicated to something that God never instructed you to do. So you got to be faithful in being obedient to what God, uh, has told you to do willing faithfulness willing faithful and obedient all right those that is the ingredients to a successful and prosperous life amen good evening to you god bless you brother lamar pray that all is well with you and your family and you are having a god bless monday afternoon god bless you on this monday afternoon good evening to the mclaughlins god bless the mclaughlins on this monday afternoon I pray that all is well with you all and you all are having a God bless Monday afternoon. Praise the Lord. I cannot see who all is on here. When I was coming on in the beginning, I lost signal. The, the, I guess the, the signal went in and out or something like that. So I don't really uh, know who all is on here. So I want to greet each and every one of you and I pray blessings upon you. Amen to you, my father's children. And I want to welcome everybody, all nationalities, uh, all, all, all people. I want to, I want to welcome you, whether you're in church, whether you're not in church. I want to welcome you because I am after the souls. Amen. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I'm here for you. I want to lead you, uh, to the, to the Savior. I want to, introduce you to Christ Jesus, the Lord, and he is able to save, heal, deliver, and set you free. Amen. Whatever you need, God's got it. Amen. So 
uh, I want to say welcome. No matter uh, your nationality, no matter your background, amen, no, no matter where you're from, amen, uh, Jesus is able to save, heal, and deliver and set free. So I welcome you to another edition of Back to the Bible. I get a lot of people who come up to me, whether in the gym, the restaurants, or when I'm out and about, a lot of people don't go to church. A lot of people are not in Christ, and but they're being blessed by the lives. They're being blessed by the segments and things, and so they share with me. So to God be the glory for that. And uh, so I'm grateful for them even feeling welcome and feel comfortable to tune in. And one of the things that people tell me, uh, those that don't go to church, those that are not in Christ, they 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 appreciate the consistency as it relates to teaching and preaching the truth. They want to hear the truth. You know, they, they encourage me all the time. Hey, man, don't stop telling the truth. Don't stop speaking the truth, man. You tell it like it is. Man, I'm telling you, that word steps on my toes, but it is so it is so good, man. I, I appreciate your boldness and your willingness to tell the truth and don't sugarcoat it and all that kind of stuff. They don't want that, guys. They want the truth. They want the unadulterated truth. They want the gospel truth, 100%, okay? And so and we as the church, we got to, we got to return back to our first love and we got to allow God to restore that hunger and that thirst after righteousness and after the truth. It is the church. It is people in church that has a problem with the truth. Amen. But the unsaved, that's what they want. That's what they long for. Amen. They want to hear the preacher tell the truth. Amen. Amen. So thank God for all of those and all of you that are, you may be watching tonight. I want to say thanks to you and for your support and, and for your testimonies and things like that and sharing those uh, words of encouragement with me. I really do appreciate it. And I want to say thanks to everyone who tunes in every Monday night as much as you can. I know people have busy schedules. They work. They they are. Uh, you know, they, they, they have a lot going on. They got families, they got kids. So I get it. You know what I'm saying? So many of them are able to tune in when they can, but I want to say thank you to each and every one who tune in as much as you can every Monday night to support back to the Bible and those who share the videos as well. Amen. One can chase a thousand, two can put 10,000 to flight. And when we come together, like we do, and, and and serving one Lord, one faith, one baptism, representing fellowship, we can reach more together than we can apart. So I want to say thank you to each and every one for all that you do and the part you play and the role you play as it relates to back to the Bible. Good evening to you, missionary Belinda Tees. God bless you on this Monday afternoon. I pray that all is well with you and your family. You're doing absolutely well. And I also want to wish you a happy belated birthday, Missionary Teagues. I saw that you had a birthday uh, this past week. And so from back to the Bible family, we want to send you a happy birthday shout out. God bless you, Missionary Teagues. And we pray God's continuous blessings upon you. Amen. And, and, and that he would continue to bless you and keep you in good health. That he would continue to renew your strength and renew your mind and just keep you just strong and healthy and committed and dedicated and that the rest of your days will be the best of your days. Amen. That's what we speak and we believe and we come in agreement with right now in Jesus name. Amen. And all of all the other brothers and sisters who may have a birthday in the month of July, we speak the same thing upon you as well. Greetings to you. All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and open up with a word of prayer. Amen. I'm not going to prolong the time. We're going to get right in this thing so that we can get in this segment tonight. I got a lot of great things I want to share with you. And so let's go ahead and uh, as they say, get this, get this, get this party started. <laughs> Amen. Come on, let's pray. Father, we thank you tonight. We praise you, God. We glorify you. And we magnify your name for this is the day that you have made. We have come to rejoice and be glad in it. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice. I choose to rejoice. I make the decision to rejoice 
and be glad in it. We thank you today, God, for your, your, your everlasting love, your unconditional love. We thank you, God. Father, we pray now that you will speak tonight, that you will be in the midst of us, have your way, God, impart unto us spiritual gift that we might be established. Oh God, we thank you, God. We thank you for this task. We thank you for this opportunity to come together one more time. Father, I need you to help me. I need your strength. I need your power. I need your anointing. I need, I need your wisdom. I need your knowledge and everything, God. I pray that you would use me. Speak through me. Let the people see you and not me. Let them hear you and not me. God, tell me what to say and I'll say it. Tell me what to do and I'll do it. And it'll all be for your glory. Bless us tonight. Consecrate us now to thy service, Lord, by the power of grace divine. Let our souls look up with a steadfast hope and I will be lost and die. Save somebody tonight. Heal somebody tonight. Set somebody free by the power of God. Reclaim and restore backsliders everywhere. Those that have drifted and strayed away for you are married to the backslider. Father, we pray that you rebuke the devourer. We pray that you will rebuke the enemy. We pray that you will bind him on every side, that nothing shall come and hinder and distract this word. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for protection. We thank you for your covering. We thank you for surrounding us with your blood and allowing the angels to encamp about those that fear your name. Oh God, give us answers to questions, give us solutions to problems in the name of Jesus. And God, when it's all said and done, oh God, let some come running saying, Lord, what must I do to be saved? Let repentance hit to live tonight. Oh God, bring your word, God, with conviction and understanding that leads to repentance. God, who you love, you chasing it in the name of Jesus. And we know that this is your love in action. Hallelujah. And we shall know the truth and the truth shall make us free. We thank you tonight. Have your way, Jesus. Have your way, Jesus. Have your way, Jesus. Now, Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Oh Lord, you are my strength and my redeemer. And we count it done. It is so right now. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Thank God. Amen. Amen. And amen. Good evening to Brother Darvez, my little brother up in Winston-Salem, representing Brother Darvez Harrison. What's going on, bro Brother Darvez? I pray that all is well with you and your family. You're doing absolutely well on this Monday afternoon. Good evening to you. Greetings to you, my brother. Blessings to you. Blessings to you. All right, guys, let's go ahead and get started. We're going to read our scripture tonight. Um, I'm going to go back to first Corinthians. I meant first Chronicles. I'm sorry. We're going back to first Chronicles chapter 15 and verse 16. I want to read that again because I did not get a chance to finish that on last Monday night. All right get my Bible here. Let me get my, let me get my, my weapon, my sword. <laughs> Amen. The saints, the saints call it the sword. Get your sword. You got your sword. The church mothers used to ask you back in the day, son, do you have your sword? Where's your sword at? <laughs> Amen. Amen. Where's your sword? Amen. So first Chronicles, thank you, sir. God bless you. Thank you so much. I am doing absolutely well. Have no complaints at all. God's been good to me. Amen. Amen. Thank God for you. God bless you, brother. Um, good evening to you. Let me see. Sister Keisha Hodges, what's going on? DTWC Georgia's own, representing Amen on the live tonight, and she's doing a, a wonderful job representing DTWC down there in Georgia. Amen. Praise the Lord. She representing down there. Glory to God. <laughs> Amen. So First Chronicles, First Chronicles, chapter fifteen and verse sixteen. First Chronicles, chapter fifteen and verse sixteen. Now, ladies and gentlemen. 
we got a we got a lot to talk about. Um, we got a lot to do. Okay, this segment is is needed, it's necessary, and uh we got a lot to do. Amen. And so uh just like any of the other segments, um, um a lot of things will be spoken and it may be challenging. Um but you know if 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 we if we if we hang in there, amen. If we hang in there, amen, don't be so quick to uh sign off, jump off, you know, hear the conclusion of the whole matter. And uh, and like I tell people, anything that steps on your toes, anything that offends, anything that um challenges you, that's an indication that something is there, that something is wrong. Because that's why it's important that whatever we teach, whatever we, we, we do, whatever we say, let it be biblically based. So when you give people the Bible, what's going on, Brother Anthony Garner Jr.? What's up, man? God bless you on this Monday afternoon. I pray that all is well with you, man. Good to see you, little brother. What's going on, man? God bless you and your family on this Monday afternoon. Um, so that's why when we use the word, that's why I want to always use the word. I want the word to be the foundation. Amen. I want the word to be the biblical foundation of whatever I teach or whatever I share. Um, and so that's how, you know, it's something wrong. There's something that's there that the word of God comes to, to challenge. It comes to correct. It comes to confront, but it's all it's all a, a a a it's all a manifestation of God's love for you and I. Amen. Who the Lord loveth, He chasing it. Amen. So we gotta understand that the chastening from the Lord is an act of His love for us. Amen. He uh, He He wants what's best for us. He wants us to operate in the way that He 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 desires. His Word declares. Amen. And we cannot change it. We cannot. We cannot uh, operate and, and take the word and interpret it the way we want it to interpret to make it easier for ourselves and others, you know, because we're going to have to be held accountable for everything we say and do. So, you know, so a lot of times when the word comes and something is spoken and it may ruffle your feathers, well, that's a good thing. That's a good thing, guys, because if it don't ruffle your feathers, then, you know, how would you know that there is something that we, we may need to work on? We may, we may need to, we may need to adjust. Uh, uh, we may need to change. You know, Paul said it like this. He said, I didn't even know, I didn't even know what wrong was. I didn't know what sin was, except the law taught me. So the law he was referring to was the word of God. So all the while when he was saw, he thought he was doing right until he had that Damascus Road experience with Jesus. And then God changed his name and he, he allowed him to receive and, re and get his sight restored. And once he began to be taught and begin to learn the word of God, he realized, you know, the things that he thought he was doing right, he realized and found out it was not right at all. But then how he reconciled, he began to walk in that straight path. He began to do it right. And that's when God began to use him. And that's how he ended up writing the majority of the New Testament uh, books of the Bible. Amen. So we got to understand that God intentions is to make us better so that he can bring what's in us out of us. All right. But he can't do that without transition, without challenges and without correction. OK, we got to have that. That that is that is a big part of our development and our maturity in Christ Jesus. All right. So let's go to first Chronicles chapter 15 and let's look at verse 16. I read this last week. I'm going to read it again. And so, um, let's, let's, let's look at it. Let's look at it. Okay. First Chronicles chapter 15, beginning at verse, uh, let's see. Well, no, 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 no. I'm going I'm to I'm go back a little more. I'm going to go back a little more. I know I said First Chronicles 15 and verse 16, but to give you to give you a better understanding of what we're going to be talking about, um, let's go back to verse number 
12. I'm going to start at verse number 12, okay? I'm going to read the verses, and then we're going to begin to uh, talk about well, what we got to talk about tonight, okay? Let's look at uh, 1 Chronicles chapter 15, and let's start at verse number 12. 1 Chronicles 15, let's start at verse number 12. Here beginning the reading of God's word. And, and said unto them, um, this is David. David called all of the priests. Okay. In verse 11, David was calling all of the priests together. Um, and, 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 and this is, this is the instruction, um, from the Lord through David. Okay. The Bible says, and said unto them, ye are the chief of the fathers of the Levites. Okay. Notice the first instruction. Notice the first instruction that David gives the, 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 the fathers of the Levites. These are the fathers of the Levites. Notice what he says, sanctify yourself. That's big. That's big. That is big. The first thing he says is sanctify yourself. We know that sanctify means to set apart. It means, it means to be set apart for the master's use only. It means to, it means to set yourself apart, set, set yourself apart to consecrate yourself for, for God's use only. Sanctify yourself. If you're going to be a musician for the Lord, the first thing you must do, the first require, requirement, it's not an option, guys. It's not a choice. It's not a choice. Amen. <laughs> you, 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 this, this is a requirement. And the church need to get back to the Bible. The church need to get back to the Bible. We, we can't expect the people to operate in the Bible or from the Bible. We, we, we can't expect the people to obey the Bible until we as leaders get back to the Bible. We got to get back to teaching the Bible. We got to get back to standing on what the word says. We got to get back to, to, being, to being an example ourselves and we cannot continue to compromise. See, this is David. David represents leadership. He was the king. And so the king, the king was the one that made the decrees. It was the king that made the decrees. Okay. So, so the king had to call in the fathers of the Levites. He had to call in the priest. And, 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 and this is what David instructed the Levite, the fathers of the Levites, the priest, sanctify yourself. He says, sanctify yourself, both you and your brethren. See, we have a responsibility to help each other, to hold each other accountable and to make sure that we are sanctified. We are sanctified. So even as a musician, even as a musician, right? Even as a musician, musicians have a responsibility to hold each other accountable to make sure that they all are sanctified. See, see. Now, if you, if you can, if you can, now I'm gonna get into that later. I'm gonna get into that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna save this. I'm gonna save that part. I'm gonna save the portion that I was about to say. I'm gonna save that for a little later. I'm gonna keep on reading because now we see, 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 we, we are, we are allowing people, see, we are allowing people to, to play without any requirements. We are allowing people to play without any sanctification. Now, if you are not sanctified, you are not ministering. You can't minister unless you're sanctified. Because it is in your sanctification that God anoints you to minister. You cannot minister unless you have sanctified yourself so that God can impart into you. Not only can God impart into you, but also take out of you. 
Amen. So it is within sanctification that we separate ourselves from the ungodly things and the unclean things so that we can prepare ourselves to be used of God in order to minister. Amen. So it is not a gig. It is ministry. See, <laughs> if you if you're not sanctified, it's a gig. If you're not sanctified, it's a hustle. Good God Almighty. If you're not sanctified, it's some quick money. If you're not sanctified, it's something to do in order to make some money. But if you are sanctified, it is not a gig. It is not a hustle. It is ministry. And so too many musicians are operating with the mindset, this is a gig. This is a hustle. This has nothing to do with ministry, guys. And so this is what we're seeing. This is what we're seeing. This is what we're seeing. And so we have to, we have to stick with the scriptures. Now, the Bible says that both you and your brethren, both you and your brethren of the Levites sanctify yourselves, both you and your brethren that ye may bring up the ark of the Lord God of Israel unto the place that I have prepared for it. Now, here it is again. Now, watch this. Check this out. Good evening to you, Pastor Derek Murray and to Lady Kimberly Murray and the Rescue Temple Church family. God bless you all on this Monday afternoon. I pray that all is well with you and your families and you are doing well. And again, congratulations to you on your second pastoral anniversary. Amen. God bless you, sir. Uh, good evening to you. Everybody else that's coming in, God bless you. Pray that all is well. I can't really see everybody because in the beginning of the video, I kind of lost uh, the signal went out for just a few seconds. So I really, I can't tell. I can't see who all on here. I don't really know how many people on here, but I'm, I'm just going to keep on flowing. Amen. Because we, we done hit a vein. I got to keep going. Y'all are saying that. And so the Bible says, now, now notice what it says. First thing he says, first thing he says, he calls, watch this. He calls, he calls the fathers of the Levites. He calls the priests. He calls the leadership. Amen. Because a musician is a type of leader. Glory to God. And so, and so it is, it is imperative that we understand the role. It's not just, it's not a, it's not, it's not a, it's not just a gift. It is, it is, it is a gift that is doing ministry. It's a ministry. See, music is a ministry. That's why it does matter who's playing the music. And it does matter what kind of music is being played and what kind of music is being sung. Because there's a spirit behind every type of music. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah to God. Amen. 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 And so, and so, um, and so um, the Bible says the chief of the fathers of the Levites. The first thing David says to them is sanctify yourself, set yourself apart. Okay. Then he says, both you and your brethren. So he says, when you sanctify yourself, each musician has a responsibility to hold each other accountable as it relates to sanctification. So all of you and I, I, now I'm coming, now, now I want to talk to the leaders. I want to come and I want to say a word to all pastors and all leaders. We got to be careful what we call traditional and we got to be careful what we call religious because the Bible says, because as it relates to sanctification and as it relates to holiness, we have labeled sanctification and holiness as being traditional and religious. We need to be careful about that. 
We need to be careful about that, that we don't take the, 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 the sacraments of God and we don't take the requirements of God and make them of no effect. And we got to be careful what we categorize. Uh, we got to be careful what we label that God requires. Glory to God. You cannot, you cannot belittle sanctification and expect to be a great, a great leader in the kingdom. Amen. Now you could be something great. You could be something popular and something famous as it relates to that circle of that, that secular circle. Glory to God. But in the kingdom, hallelujah to God, you are required to be sanctified and consecrated and you got to be holy. You got to be careful what you call traditional and religious, sir, because you want to be worldly and contemporary so that you can conform to this culture that's trying to control the church. So you got to be careful, sir, and you got to be careful, ma'am, what you call religion and what you call traditional. Glory to God, because God said in 1 Peter 1 and 16, he said, be ye holy, <clears throat> for I am holy. So holiness is the lifestyle of being holy. So don't be calling hallelujah to God. So to call to, to, to call holiness traditional and being religious and being churchy, what are you really saying? Because God said, I want you to be holy for I am holy. You are required to be holy because I'm holy. And if you're going to be my people, you got to be holy because I'm a holy God. You can't be a holy people. Uh, hallelujah to God. You can't be a people of God and not be holy. Hallelujah. Holiness is required of a holy God. So be careful what you call traditional and religious because you want to lower the bar and you want to lower the standard so that people can come to your church. The book say we ought to be sanctified. <laughs> amen 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 see if you if you if you put if you put sanctification back into requirement of the music ministry it won't be so much fornication going on in the music ministry it won't be so many it won't be so many children being born out of wedlock in the church if you put sanctification and you put holiness back in the music ministry where it is supposed to be, according to First Chronicles chapter 15, it won't be so much perversion in the choir. It won't be so much uh, contamination in the music ministry. Hallelujah to God. We can help and we can, if we set a standard, we can help get some of these young men delivered from homosexuality. Hallelujah to God. But when you remove sanctification and you remove holiness out of the music and out of the church and start calling it religion and, and, and all of that, then this is why we see more perversion arise and we see more or sin arise than we do folks being saved. See, if we get sanctification back in the in the music department, then 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 she won't she will no longer continue to be a whoremonger. Now that spirit of whoredom is not just in women, but it's in men too. So it is a spirit of whoredom that is loose in the music ministry. You got praise team people sleeping with musicians and, and then you got choir members sleeping with each other. Glory to God. And you even got folks sleeping with the preacher. Uh oh, I'm getting in trouble. Lord have mercy. I can't get no help in here. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah to God. We, we, this is why we see, we, 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 we don't just see sex in the city. We see sex in the church. See, I'm, they don't like my teaching. You see that? See, they don't like my teaching. Hallelujah to God. They don't like my teaching. 
Hallelujah. It ain't just sex in the city. Hallelujah. It's sex in the choir. It's sex in the music ministry. It's sex, hallelujah to God, on the praise team. It's sex in the dance ministry. Glory to God. Hallelujah to God. Why? Because we don't require sanctification. That's, that's, that's more lust in the music ministry. How, how all we want to do is praise break. Our praise breaks is longer than our preaching. <laughs> Y'all ain't saying that. We want to praise break for 30 and 45 minutes, but want to preach for a good 10 minutes, seven minute sermons, <laughs> Lord have mercy, seven minute sermons, 10 minute sermons, y'all ain't saying that, 12 minute sermons, glory to God, but want to shout and dance for 40 minutes. The praise breaks are longer than the preaching. All right, you. I'm, 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 I, I got to tell the truth, ladies and gentlemen, and it, it's just, a, it's just a, and uh, now notice what it says, and uh, it says, and uh, <laughs> uh, both ye and your brethren, that ye, watch this. That ye, watch this, in verse 12, let's go back and read again. And David said unto them, ye, ye are the chief of the fathers of the Levites. He says, sanctify yourselves, both you and your brother. He says, sanctify yourselves, both you and your brothers. Everybody is required to be sanctified. Everybody, everybody is required to be sanctified. Now, see, if there was a standard in the house, if a man goes out and he commits a willful sin because of the standard of sanctification and the requirement of consecration and holiness, that man or that woman should have enough respect and honor for the standard of the house to, to uh, omit themselves from playing that Sunday, that service. They should have enough respect and they should have enough reverence and they should have some conviction as a result of the standard and as a result of the, of the reverence that they become convicted because of their choices and their decisions. And they shouldn't just happy-go-lucky, hop the trolley, walk up in the sanctuary and jump on a piece of a, 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 a piece of music or instrument or grab the mic knowing, knowing that they were not living a life of sanctification and holiness that represents the gift and the position that they have been uh, assigned to operate in. But you know why we got people who can leave, who can leave a bed that they are not authorized to be in and come right in there and play and come right in there and sing because there's no, there's no standard. There's no requirement to be sanctified and to be consecrated. And then we turn around and we pay them. We pay them. You are paying somebody that cannot or refuse to sanctify themselves. Well, number one, they don't have to because it ain't required. So why would they, why would they choose to do something that they are not required to do and still get paid? I know y'all don't like this. I know you don't. But I got to tell the truth. 
I got to tell the truth because from a from a from a from a from a pastor standpoint um from from a from a from a musician standpoint and from a person that's gifted to sing um so I know what I'm talking about okay I'm not I'm not uh I'm not out here just talking but this is not only what I've seen and what I've witnessed but I know that you can be a musician. I know that you can be a man of God and I know that you can have the gifts of God and live a saved, consecrated, uh, sanctified life. I'm a witness that you can do that. I'm a witness that you don't have to be out here messing around. You can serve the Lord with gladness. And you can come before his presence with singing and knowing that the Lord, he is God and it is he that have made us and now we are ourselves. I, I, I'm, an, I'm a witness. Good evening to you. Shonda, what's going on? Tennessee in the house. What's going on, Shonda? Long time don't see. God bless you on this Monday afternoon. I pray that all is well with you and your family. You're doing us a little well. Good evening to you, Shonda. Welcome back. Amen. Now, so the scripture says uh, that ye may bring up. Now, watch this. This is why we have to sanctify. That we may bring up the ark of the Lord. Now, we know that the ark of the Lord is the presence of the Lord. We know that the ark of the covenant represents the presence of the Lord. We know this. So that's why we have to be sanctified when we are handling the presence of the Lord. So the art represents the presence of the Lord. This is why as musicians, you have to be sanctified and you have to be consecrated because you are handling, your job is to handle the presence of the Lord. Woo! Lord have mercy. Let me tell y'all something. The mercy of the Lord is being extended, especially in the churches today. It is the mercy of God that we are seeing in manifestation because there are too many musicians that are not operating in sanctification and consecration and trying to handle the presence of the Lord, trying to play in the presence of the Lord. There are too many singers, hallelujah, trying to sing in the presence of the Lord, but have not sanctified themselves and have not consecrated themselves. This is a serious matter, ladies and gentlemen. It's too many people that are playing with the presence of God. They are playing in the presence of God. See, this is how it, this is how it's easy for people to play uh, with the presence of God because they are playing in the presence of God. See, when you, when you begin to play in, it's not hard for you to play with. See, y'all ain't saying nothing. Hallelujah to God. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right, Shonda. See, 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 it used to be a time that there was a reverence in the house, the houses of God. So much so that it, they, they had, they had rules. You couldn't play around the altar. You couldn't run and you couldn't, you couldn't come up in the pulpit and just stand around. You, 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 you had to, you had to respect the altar. You had to respect the pulpit. You had to respect the sanctuary. Now we coming in the sanctuary with, 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 with lattes and we coming in with cappuccinos and we coming in, we coming in with coffee. We coming in eating biscuits and donuts and coming in with bags of snacks and hallelujah to God. We coming in with bottles of water and, 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 and energy drinks and baseball caps and, and all kinds of stuff. See, we have lost our reverence. And we have lost our respect for the houses of God. Hallelujah to God. Thank you, Jesus. 
Now, let's look at this next verse. It says, both ye and your brethren, that ye may bring up the ark of the Lord, God of Israel, unto the place that I have prepared for it. Now watch this right here. The house of God is the place where God has prepared. Now, if, if, if it's any place that you ought to find the presence of the Lord, and I'm not saying that the presence of the Lord shouldn't be in your home and it shouldn't be on your job and it shouldn't go with you at wherever you go. But if, if, if there is any place that you ought to find the presence of the Lord, it ought to be in the house of the Lord. So God, God prepared his house to, to, to house his presence. So if you're going to find the presence of the Lord anywhere, it ought to be found in his house. <laughs> now, it ain't going to be a lot of musicians on here. I already know it. <laughs> Especially the ones that's playing for money and playing for gigs and, and, and that is engaging in sin and perversion and all of that. They, they ain't going to stay on here. They ain't going to watch it. They, ain't, they don't want nothing to do with it. They ain't trying to hear it. Y'all ain't saying that. They ain't trying to hear it because to hear the word is to be accountable to it. Amen. Praise the Lord. So, so I already know, I already know, but, but, uh, oh, what's up? What up, Eric? <laughs> there go my big brother, Elder Eric Barnes Sr. What's up, man? Now that's my, that's my boy right there. That's, me and him, you know what? Me and him, when I was I was at our home church, me and him played together. That's my that's my ace right there, Elder Eric Bond Senior. That's my ace. We used to play together. Amen. Glory to God. Yes, sir. Now we we used to throw down back in the day. We used to throw down. Hallelujah to God. And so, and so listen, listen, because we, we don't, we don't want to hear this. We don't want to hear this. And, and, and because, because money is the motivation now that, and then, and then, and then, and then brothers, brothers and sisters, we got to be careful who, who we say is anointed on an instrument because if they're not living a sanctified, consecrated, holy life, they are not anointed. They are gifted. They sound good. And if you like music, music going to move you. That's because something moves you emotionally don't mean it's anointed. Just because it sounds good to your ears don't make it anointed. See? <laughs> <laughs> That's right, Shonda. <laughs> boy, Shonda going off, boy. Good gracious. <laughs> hey now, what's going on, my sister? Chella, Chella Church Nelson, what's going on? How you doing, woman of God? Pray that all is well with you and your family. God bless you. Good to see you. And, uh, Check it out. If we gonna, if 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 the presence of God is gonna be anywhere, it ought to be in the house of God. Hmm. Now the Bible says, let's keep reading. The Bible says that ye may bring up the ark of the Lord, God of Israel, unto the place that I have. Prepare for it. Now, now, that you may bring, notice what it says, that ye may bring up the ark. So, so when, so when, so when, so when you get, when you get on that instrument, when you get on that instrument, 
because you have sanctified yourself, because you have consecrated yourself, and you are living a life that's pleasing to the Lord, when you get on that instrument and begin to play, when you grab that microphone and begin to sing the songs of Zion, the presence of God, you ought to be bringing up. You ought to be raising up. That ought to be that ought, that there ought to be a manifestation of the presence of God. When you when your fingers touch them chords, and when them drumsticks hit them drums, and when your fingers uh, pluck them strings, hallelujah to God, when, when you beat that tambourine and, 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 and when whatever instrument you are playing to the glory of God, hallelujah to God, when you blow into that saxophone, when you blow into that trumpet, when you blow into all of those instruments that require you, uh, uh, that require you to blow into them, the saxophones, the trombones, the uh, whatever, the trumpets or whatever, when you play those instruments, the Bible says that you ought to be bringing up the ark. You ought to be playing in the ark. When 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 you sanctify yourselves, you 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 can you you can you can get with one accord. Now watch this. Now watch this. Some musicians, watch this. Some musicians are harmonized. Watch this because they practice. They practice. But because you are harmonized, doesn't mean that you are with one accord. Because in order to be with one accord, you have to be with one accord with God. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah. You can be harmonized with each other and still not be with one accord with God. You, 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 you can be you can be connected together as it relates to to practicing and playing together and you know each other's style and because y'all have played together for a good little while you already know what what to do and hallelujah to God and you already know when to change and when to shift and all of that but that doesn't mean you in with you that doesn't mean that you are with one accord with God that doesn't mean you are with one accord with the Holy Ghost because the Holy Ghost can shift. The Holy Ghost can lead you in another direction. Hallelujah to God. And you got to be willing to follow him. You cannot be in control of the service. You can't play praise break music all the time. When is God going to give some true worship? If y'all always dancing, when are you going to worship? When are you going to break out and lay prostrate before the Lord? When are you going to put the microphone down? When are you going to get off the organ and get on your knees? When are you going to quit beating the drum and come to the altar? Hallelujah to God. You ain't going to be praise breaking all the time. Not if you are with one accord with the Lord. You give God what he wants. You bring God what he desires. You don't bring God what you want to bring and you don't try to, to make the people shout. See, see, if we come in, hallelujah, if we enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise, being thankful unto him and blessing his name because the Lord is good and his mercy is everlasting and his truth endures to all generations, you ain't got to try to boost nobody up. You ain't got to try to push nobody. You ain't got to say no, no catching cliches to try to strike up a dance. You ain't got to do none of that. You ain't got to do none of that. We wasting time. Hallelujah. You ain't got to do none of that. I don't need nobody to, to, to say something catchy to make me praise my God. His goodness keeps me busy. I said his goodness keeps me praising. <laughs> his mercy, hallelujah, keeps me praising, hallelujah, hallelujah to God, his forgiving power, his long suffering with me, his patience with me, it keeps me praising, 
God don't have to beg me to clap my hands. He don't have to beg me to give him glory. He don't have to beg me to open my mouth. He don't have to beg me to, to cut a step. All I got to do is think of his goodness. Yes, sir. He don't have to bed me and nobody got to prophesy to me to get me to go to praising God. I don't need no prophecy. Hallelujah to God. He saved my soul. He brought me from a long way. He made a way out of nowhere. He provided for me. He's been so good to me. I, I don't even deserve the blessings of the Lord. I don't need you to try to emotionalize me. My praise ain't predicated upon who's singing this morning and who's on the organ and all this and that. I don't care who's on the organ. I come to praise the Lord. And, and every musician should be able to praise the Lord. Outside of playing. Outside of beating the drum, you ought to be able to praise the Lord. Uh-oh. <laughs> if you ain't playing the instruments, I wonder will you have a praise? <laughs> All right, hold on, hold on. I gotta I gotta I gotta get me a sip of my Pepsi. I got a cold Pepsi right here tonight. I, I come prepared, y'all ain't saying that. I come prepared tonight. Oh boy. Now, now, uh, see, we, see, we, we, we allow too much. We allow too much. And we're afraid to say something because people will unplug, pack up, put their little big, put their little book bag on, and put their little baseball cap on and walk out the door. See, we're afraid to say something. We're afraid, we're afraid to stand and we're afraid to uphold the standard because we don't want nobody to unplug. We don't want no, we don't want to hear the sound of the zippers of the uh guitar cases and, and the keyboard cases and <clears throat> and folks putting their drumsticks in their little drumstick bag and uh putting on a little book bag like like they like they about <clears throat> Like they're about to go to about, about to go to go to PE or go to lunch. Like they're going to recess. They got to put on the little book bag and 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 everybody uh go out the side door. We allow too much. <clears throat> we don't we don't have no rules. We 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 can't afford. We can't afford to lose the musicians because if the musicians leave, the people won't come because the people are coming for the music ministry. See, we, 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 that's why we got to invest. Uh oh, I'm about to get in trouble now. That's why we got to, that's why we got to invest in the music ministry because we know that the music ministry is the magnet to the people. You know, the people are drawn to the music ministry. And so we got to make sure we got the best singers. We got to make sure we got the best musicians. We got to make sure we got the best people in the choir. Hallelujah to God. We got to hire him. We got to hire her. We got to bring in the best of the best because the music ministry is the heartbeat of the ministry. Is it? I thought Jesus said, upon this rock, I build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. He said, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall stand forever. If, 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 if we want to talk about the heartbeat of the church, it should be, it should be the Holy Ghost and his word, not the music ministry, not the famous choir director, not one of the baddest, the baddest organists in town. The heartbeat of the church is the Holy Ghost. The heartbeat of the church is the word of God. The heartbeat of the church is the presence of the Lord. Whether you got a choir or not, whether you got a praise team or not, whether you got a full band or orchestra or not, 
Because you can do without musicians, but you can't do without the presence. You can do without musicians, but you can't do without the word, okay? Uh, let's put things back into perspective. And I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you something. <laughs> I'm going to tell y'all something. I got to say it. But a lot of musicians are playing a lot of leaders. <clears throat> you get played. You get played. <clears throat> I know you don't want to hear it, <clears throat> and I know this is tough to hear, but a lot of leaders are getting played by a lot of musicians, because a lot of these musicians, they are hustlers, they are, they are, uh, <laughs> all right, all right, y'all don't want no truth, you don't want no truth, I'm going to keep reading, because you don't, you don't, you don't like, you don't like, Hello, lights. <laughs> y'all don't like y'all don't like this kind of teacher. You're getting played. Now, I'm gonna make some preachers mad, and I'm gonna make some musicians mad. I already know it. But don't don't get mad at the messenger. Don't get mad at the mailman. Um. But. You're getting played. And in a lot of cases, the musicians are getting played by the preachers because they only want to use you to play for them, to make them better, to enhance them because they are performers. They are performers. A lot of the preachers are performers. A lot of the singers, they are performers. So they need you, musician, to, 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 to assist them in their performance. They know that you are gifted. They know that God has gifted you and has talented you. Uh, 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 they, 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 they know. They know. They already know that there is, there is, a, there is a gift uh, on, on your life. So they they are they are prostitutes. See, see there there is there is prostitution, there is prostitution that's taking place on both ends. In some cases, you got the preacher prostituting the musicians. But then in other cases, you got the musicians prostituting the preacher and prostituting the singers. You got the singers prostituting the musicians and then you got musicians prostituting the singers. So prostitution is going on in all the areas, in the pulpit, in the music ministry, and in the choir, in the praise team. Prostitution. Prostitution is to render service in exchange for money. To render service in exchange for money. That's what prostitution is. If you look up the word prostitution, you're going to see that definition after the word prostitution. To render service for the exchange of money. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to tell you, a lot of times people are, people are, people can disguise prostitution because of the benefits that comes with prostitution. You travel with me, I put you in a nice hotel. When I eat, you eat. When I get paid, you get paid. 
Um, when I'm going to take care of you. When I buy a suit, you get a suit. See, most people would call that blessings. On the outside looking in, that looks like blessings. That looks like, man, you got it going on. Man, that looks like, that looks like, man, you got it made. Man, I wish I was in your shoes. See, that's the outside person looking in. But those that are involved and those that are engaging in these transactions, they know that it is not all what it turns out to be. But as long as people think it's a blessing, as long as people think it's a golden opportunity, as long as people think it's a door that was open and a way that was made, or all oh, the favor of God is with you, as long as people think that, nobody will ever suspect that they are witnessing, unbeknownst to them, acts of prostitution right before their eyes. And this is why the presence of God can't rise. We sing in songs, let the glory of the Lord rise among us, but there is no glory because there is no sanctification. <laughs> and just because you sing a song, don't cause it to manifest in your midst. That's because you sing the words does not cause the manifestation in your midst. You can sing, let the glory of the Lord rise among us. But if you are not sanctified and you're not consecrated, the glory of the Lord cannot rise. <laughs> Boy, y'all don't like this kind of teaching. I don't like this kind of teaching. It's okay, though. No. It's all good. And the Bible says, teach Gary. <laughs> share, share that video, Shonda. Share this video. Help that thing get out. Because folk need to hear this. And the sad part about it is, People don't want, a lot of people don't want to hear what they need to hear, but they are, they are willing to hear what they don't need to hear. Thank you, Shonda. Thank you. Now, the Bible says, for, watch, look at verse 13, look at verse 13. For because ye did it not at the first, the Lord our God made a breach upon us for that we sought him not after the due order. Now watch this. Check this out. Check this out. David is telling them, be, when you and I, when we do not sanctify ourselves and we do not do that which God requires so that we can see the presence and the ark of God, it causes a breach between us and him. There is a breach. Anytime we allow sin and anytime we allow perversion and anytime we allow flesh and performance to, to take place in the houses of worship, we are allowing ourselves to, to be breached. We are allowing a breach to come between us and God. In the presence of God. Now tell me, explain to me, how is it that we are saying that the presence of God and the power of God and the glory of God is falling where there is no sanctification and there is no consecration and there is no holiness going on? Why? How can we say the presence of the Lord is falling? Oh, the glory of the Lord is among us, but there is perversion and there is no sanctification and there is sin and there is there is all of this stuff we see going on in the houses of worship. How can the glory fall when perversion is your praise and worship leader? How can the glory fall when lust is your organist? How can the glory fall when your choir director is not living a sanct sanctified, consecrated life? How is it 
that there are people that are in the music ministry, they are in violation of the word of God. Many of them are living abominable lives that goes against the word of God. How is the presence of God falling? And the sad part is, the sad part is there are people that are coming to church looking for the presence of God, needing the presence of God, longing to get in the presence of God, coming to church seeking an answer and seeking a word from God and seeking a solution and, and needing a breakthrough and, and wanting deliverance and, and wanting healing in their body, only to come into a place where there is a breach between God's presence and the people. Because the music ministry, the priest, the Levites have not sanctified themselves to the place that it causes the power of God to be released. Mm. And so David said, David said in verse 13, for because you did not at the t first time, the Lord God, the Lord our God made a breach upon us because we didn't follow. Anytime you refuse to follow, anytime we as leaders allow such lifestyles and such living and, 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 and such behavior, when we leaders allow these things and we compromise with the standard of God, we break fellowship. We cause a breach between us and God. And the only reason why these things are happening is because there is no, there is no discipline, there is no standard, there is no order in our leaders. Our leaders are allowing these things. People can't just come up in the church and just do what they want unless the leadership allows it. The leadership has to allow these things. We, 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 cannot, we, cannot, we cannot turn the other cheek. We cannot look the other way because somebody is gifted or that's, that's, uh, that's elder so-and-so's son or that's mother so-and-so's son or that's prophet is so-and-so's son or that's, that's bishop, that's bishop's grandson. I don't care who he is. I don't care who she is. If they are not meeting the requirements of the word of God, they need to be sat down. They need to be sat down. Rather, they sit themselves down or you need to have a private meeting in the office. I'm, I'm not. Now, as long as you think you got the presence of the Lord, you're not going to do what the Bible uh, instructs you to do because you already think you got the presence. You already think the glory is already there. So you don't see the need to listen or hearken or, you know, you know, and you, you know, you know, you got some people, you know, and you know, I, I, I already know, I already know that, that there's some people that, you know, when people get mad and you offend them because of the truth, you know, there's some people that may go on our church page, right? They may go on our church page and check out the services and say, I wonder who's playing for him. Nobody. You, you, I'm going to save you a trip. You ain't even got to go over there to the Living Temple Worship Center uh, Greensboro page. I'm going to save you a trip. There's a standard in that house, but the glory is there. The presence of God is there. The power of God is there. God is moving by his spirit and by his power. There is no musicians. Do we have musicians? Yes, we do. But are they playing? No, they're not. Because they understand the standard over that house. And they got enough respect and they got enough honor not to come in the house of God and jump on instruments 
and they know they haven't sanctified themselves. Why? Because there's a standard over the house and the pastor upholds it. Amen. Amen. Musicians ain't hard to come by. All you got to do is offer some money. All you got to do is offer some money and they'll be there. We don't need no hustlers. We don't need no prostitutes. We need, we need, we need men and women who is walking with the Lord and has submitted and committed their lives to the Lord. We don't need, we don't need nobody to come in and hustle the ministry. We, 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 we don't need, we don't need that street mentality. I, I, I grew up in the hood, so I, I recognize I recognize the, the 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 behavior and the characteristics of ex hustlers and 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 ex 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 whatevers. So you can't bring that spirit into the house of God and then not be identified and then not be recognized. You can't you can't come in talking no slang, y'all ain't saying that. You can't come in with no swag and, and try to run no game because I'm gonna peep your card. See, 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 and see, and there's some, there's some brothers and some sisters that grew up in the hood just like me, and 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 they recognize the game and they recognize the slang, and you can't come in there trying to sweet talk somebody and, and try to sell yourself and try to and try to and try to make somebody think that you you the best thing since sliced bread because the first question gonna come out of my mouth: Are you saved? <laughs> Do you have the Holy Ghost? Do you love the Lord? Where did you come from? Hallelujah to God. What's your, what's your track record? Hallelujah. Uh, do you believe in being planted and rooted in a ministry? Hallelujah. When the last time you've been to Bible study, do you believe in tithing? Do you tithe? I, I can't get no help in here. Where you live. Hallelujah to God. Who you living with? Is you married to him? Hallelujah to God, because you can't shack at your house and come in here and try to shout us in God's house. Hallelujah. You can't be a shacker and a shouter. Y'all ain't saying that. You, you, you got to give up. You got to give up shacking if you want your shout to reach heaven. If you want your shout to move God, you got to give up fornication. You got to give it up. You got to give it up. You got to give up the clubbing. If you're going to play here, if you're going to sing here, you can't be dropping it like it's hot and shaking it from the east to the west. And you, you can't be, you can't be doing, you can't be doing no chicken noodle soup and you can't be doing all of this other stuff you can't be twerking on Saturday night and try to lead us into praise and worship on Sunday morning <laughs> you can't do it sorry and one of the things that I require <laughs> one of the things Shonda said <laughs> One of the things that I require, one of the things that I require is when when musicians come to me and say, hey, man, I would love to play at Deliverance Temple. I would love to play for y'all. I, I, you know, man, God told me to call you. God is leading me to Deliverance Temple. He is? Really? He is? Oh, okay. Okay, then. You say the Lord told you to come, huh? Yeah, the Lord told me to come. I said, okay then. So this is what I tell him. I said, okay, this is what I want you to do. I want you to come to Bible study for 30 days. I want you to come to Sunday morning worship, and I want you to come to Bible study for 30 days without playing. Just show up, come to service on Sunday morning, stay the whole service. Don't be sitting back there on your phone. I want you to come uh, for service, bring your Bible. I want you to come to Bible study on Wednesdays, bring your Bible, stay the whole Bible study for 30 days. <laughs> the Bible said, try the spirit to see whether it be of God. <laughs> That's what the book say. Try them. You said the Lord told you to come here. Let's see. You say the Lord sent you here. We're going to see. Come to church for 30 days. Don't play not one instrument. You can look at them, but don't touch. 
<laughs> Look, but don't touch for 30 days. You know what? When the meeting is over, I never see him again. Because if you say the Lord sent you, if you say you're here for the right reason, and you say you want to you wanna, um, please the Lord and all that, I need to get myself together. Well, get yourself together. Well, if you say the Lord sent you here to get yourself together, then he sent you here to be delivered. So let's get you delivered before we let you play. Because over here at Deliver Temple, we specialize in deliverance. <laughs> let's get you delivered first. Let's, let's focus on that, okay? Let's focus on that. DB3, what's up, brother? Good evening to you. Pray that all is well with you, man. Good to see you, sir. What's happening, man? DB3 in the house. Oh boy, DB3. You might have to you might have to go back and check out the video. What's up, J Mac? James McMillan, aka Jack Mac. What's up, J Mac? God bless you, brother. Good to see you. Pray that all is well. J Mac said, Amen, brother. <laughs> Because see, that's how you find out. This is how we're going to, this is how we're going to put a stop to a lot of the things that we see going on. Because we got to have a standard, ladies and gentlemen. You got to require something. You got to require something. I mean, they can't just come. They, look. Gifts are good, talents are good, skills are good, okay? But we got to get back to caring and being more concerned about the souls of men and women. In spite of your gifts, you can sing, you can play, but more importantly than that to me is the condition of your soul. How are you spiritually? How does your walk with God? Let's 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 focus on that. Um, how is your personal life? Do you have any issues that you want to talk about? Let's let's deal with the let's deal with the daddy issues. Let's deal with the, the mama issues. Let's deal with the trust issues. Let's deal with the brokenness. Let's, let's deal with the low self-esteem. Let's, let's deal with the validation issues. This is why a lot of them cannot take correction because they lack authority figures in their lives. So they don't mind being permitted. They don't allow permission. They don't allow freedom. They just got a problem with correction. They just got a problem with authority. They just got a problem with accountability. Let's 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 work on that. Let's let's address that. Let's let's deal let's deal with let's deal with the spirit of lust. Let's 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 deal with that. Where what is the root of this spirit of lust? Okay, look, we we we, we you know yes 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 I I see the gift yes. Yes, I see the talent. Yes, yes, yes. I know you can sing. Yes, yes. I, I know, I know you're skilled. I, I know, I, I, I see it. I see it. Yes, 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 yes. But most importantly than that, I see a lot of hurt behind all that talent. I see a lot of anger behind all that singing. I see a lot of brokenness. Behind all of that, you are gifted, you're talented, you can write, you can play, you can sing, you can direct. But behind all of that, that that directing and out of all of that, you getting everybody else harmonized and you getting everybody else in their right key and you getting everybody else 
hallelujah to God in their part and you bringing everybody together and, and you can you can you can direct and you can organize and and you can put on a great musical and and you can you can throw a great concert and all of that's fine but out of all of that let's minister to the little girl in you without any perversion involved Let's minister to the little boy in you without taking advantage of you and causing you to relive the molestation all over again. You can trust the men and women of God that God raises up to help you to develop and to become the man and the woman of God that you are supposed to be. God would never put you in the hands of a predator. Hallelujah. When God sets you under leadership, it's going to be the right leadership. It's going to be the right mentor. It's going to be the right role models. You don't have to worry about being violated. You don't have to worry about being molested. You don't have to worry about being raped. You don't have to worry about going through those torment and those nightmares. And you don't have to keep reliving the same things over and over and over. God will put you in a safe place. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I see you playing. I hear you playing. But why are you so angry? What's causing you to drink? Yeah, you 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 can shout the you can shout the house down. You can make everybody else dance. But when it's all said and done, you go home and drink. You got to go home and light light a blunt. You got to light a blunt after church while everybody else is walking away, holding their Bible, got a blessing, got a word out of the message, got, got a revelation from the word, and you got to go home and light a blunt. What's going on? But you play good, you sing good, you, you, you sing, you sing, you sing people in to a place where they are raising their hands and they're singing. But then you go home and watch pornography. You have no peace. You have no joy. You have no contentment. You still have a void in your life. You, 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 what, what, let's, let's address that. Thank God for your gift, but I'm concerned about your soul. Yeah, 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 you 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 getting paid, you making good money. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, all that's fine and good. But what about your soul? What about the condition of your soul? Yeah, 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 yeah. Your, your, your pockets are full, but your soul is empty. Your, 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 your bank account is in the positive, but, 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 but your, what your, but your re relationship with God is in the negative. Yeah, 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 yeah. They bought you a car, but, but, but that car can't replace the emptiness and the void that you have that only God can feel. What, 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 what's, what's, what's the reason? What's the cause? What's going on? Let's talk about it. Let's let's pray about it. Let's 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 go. Let's 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 take a trip down to the altar. I'll go with you. I'll go with you. I'll pray with you. I'll 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 tarry with you. Tarry means to wait. I'll stay right there with you until you get your breakthrough. Because your healing, your deliverance, your salvation, your development, your maturity is more important than you playing, singing, and all of that. That's what God is concerned about. That's what God wants. The ultimate the ultimate purpose, 
the ultimate goal of this segment. And many, many musicians are going to miss the move of God in the midst of this segment because they're allowing their feelings and their emotions and they're allowing their flesh to cause them to get offended and to disconnect from a place of deliverance. The purpose of this segment is to bring deliverance, to bring healing, to bring reconciliation, to bring restoration to men and women who are operating in ministry, but they are so disconnected from God. They, they are, they are, they are in, they are in churches. They are in churches, but they are not in God. But the purpose of them is to not just come to church, but ultimately come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Jesus wants you to come to him. Hallelujah. You come to the church, but he wants you to come to him. And Father, tonight, this word went forth tonight. You spoke your word. You sent your word to heal us, to save, to heal, to deliver and set free. Have your way, Lord. Bless us now. Consecrate us now. Hallelujah. To thy service, Lord. Hallelujah. By the power of grace divine. Oh, God, move tonight. Somebody is watching tonight. There are people that are watching tonight. They are listening tonight. They shall watch this later, God. Allow your anointing, your drawing power. You're ministering right now. You're touching people right now. You, you are healing people right now. There's a, there's a healing. You are healing the brokenhearted. Those that are, that are, that are bound by these, these, these issues and these strongholds. You are able to destroy every yoke. You are able to destroy the yoke and lift every burden. Let the captives go free. Touch musicians everywhere. Save, heal, and deliver. Bring a breakthrough tonight. In the name of Jesus, prick the hearts of those who have an ear to hear what the Spirit has to say. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for deliverance. We thank you for healing that brokenness. We thank you for healing that, that pain that is tied to molestation and, and violation and all of those things. Trust, disappointment. Oh, God, heartbreak. Glory to God. We pray that you would break bitterness tonight in the name of Jesus. There are some that are bitter because people have used them and have taken advantage of them and they are bitter. Hallelujah to God. They are playing, they are singing, they are preaching, but they are preaching and playing and singing out of a place of bitterness. Break that stony heart, take out that stony heart and give them a heart of flesh. Restore unto them the joy of their salvation, creating them a clean heart, O oh God, hallelujah, and renew a right spirit within me. Renew a right spirit within them. Sanctify us, God. Purify us, God. Consecrate us, God. Oh God, we don't want a breach to be between you and us. But God, we want to fill in that gap. We want to follow your instructions. We want to sanctify ourselves. We want to call ourselves together and hold each other accountable. We love you tonight. We thank you for this word. We thank you for the opportunity, God, for who you love you chasing. And we thank you tonight. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for the change. We thank you for the manifestation. We thank you, God, for the fruit that shall come forth out of this teaching. We thank you. We praise you right now. Oh God, hallelujah. You get the glory. Save somebody tonight. Reclaim the backslider tonight in the name of Jesus. Help us to get our focus back on you. Help us to get our focus back on ministry in the name of Jesus. Provide and supply our every need according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And I thank you and I praise you now. Bless my brothers and sisters. Bless every pastor, every leader in the name of Jesus. Strengthen our leaders. 
Strengthen pastors everywhere, God. Restore the boldness back into them, God. Those that are struggling, oh God, to, to, to speak the truth. Give them the strength and the boldness, oh God. Restore to them their first love, God. In the name of Jesus, help them to stand on your word and trust your process. Help them to trust your word. In the name of Jesus, even though some may walk away and leave, allow them to stay focused on the, on the ministry and on the, on the assignment. And God, give them the grace to endure. Give them the grace to endure and stand on your word and on your promises. For your word cannot fail and your word cannot return back void, but it must, uh, it must accomplish that which you sent it to do. And we count it done and we claim it now in Jesus name we pray. Thank God. Thank God. Amen. Amen. And amen. Oh God, we thank you. And we thank you. And we thank you. Lord, I've done what you told me to do. And I said what you told me to say. Get the glory out of it all and restore the virtue back in me, I pray. And we count it done in Jesus name. Thank God. Thank God. What a wonderful, 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 wonderful time we had tonight. What a beautiful, beautiful segment tonight. A wonderful gathering. Amen. And I pray that somebody's life was changed. I pray that souls, I pray that young men, men, women everywhere have heard this word tonight, that this is a word of reconciliation. This is a word of healing. This is a word of deliverance. Yes, we have to address the problems, but ultimately addressing the problem is designed to bring restoration to the souls of man. We don't just want to address the problem and not make the way for people to come and repent and come and, and be reconciled and, and we not share the love of God and the desire that God wants to worship and to fellowship. He wants worship from his people. He wants, he wants us to fellowship with him. He don't want a breach between us and him, but God will be true to his word. He will honor his word. The Bible said he put his word above his name. So God is going to honor his word. Amen. So I thank God that that he honors his word, but ultimately he is concerned about the souls and the conditions of people. Yes, he's concerned. And we have to be concerned for people as well. We cannot, we cannot just let people stay in brokenness and stay in a place that is not spiritually healthy for them only because we we enjoy the gift. We benefiting from the gift that God has given them, but we're not concerned about their soul. We're not concerned about um, their well being and their relationship with God. I love, I love, I love my brothers and sisters. I love musicians. I I know a lot of musicians. Being a musician, musicians know each other. Um, I have some, I have some great young men at our church, but. I have a standard to uphold. God has a standard and we got to uphold it. And one of the things that I can say about our musicians is they respect, they respect the standard and they respect me for upholding it. And they tell me all the time, you know, pastor, we respect you, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, and, and yet because of the stance and because of the upholding of the standard, the presence and the glory of God, no doubt, the authentic presence of God is residing in Deliver's Temple. It's there. The proof is in the pudding. <laughs> Amen. And there has never been a person that has ever visited our church. Everyone that has ever visited our church, came to our church, has been a part of a service of our church. Everybody says the same thing. Truly. The presence of the Lord is in this place. We've had people visit our church from different states. We've had people drive. We had people visit, not just uh, watching virtually, but we've had people visit our church. And everybody that has ever been there, they 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 left with a blessing. 
They heard the word. God moved and touched them. Many of them got healed, got delivered, got set free. Folks have gotten saved from one visit because the presence of the Lord is in the place. Amen. And so this is how we protect the glory of God. We have to have uh, a standard. We got to uphold it. And as leaders, we got to walk in the standard too. We got to be living sanctified, consecrated lives. It can't be about us. We can't be men and women that's caught up in image and performance and all of that and operating in flesh. Amen. People need to see an example of a worshiper and a praiser. I don't, I don't sit in the office while the saints are praising God. I don't sit in the pulpit, uh, sitting there all dignified and acting all cool. Amen. Uh, and sitting there. No, I, I lead the people into praise. I lead the people into prayer. I lead the people into worship because the priest is the, the, the priests are really the true praise and worship leaders. The priest, the priest ought to be able not just to preach, amen, but the priest ought to be able to lead the people in prayer. The priest ought to be able to lead the people in praise and the worship, amen. The priest, they are anointed, they are consecrated to do those things. And the people ought to be able to see the priest praising God, not sitting there with the legs crossed, not sitting there looking all cute, all cute and dignified. And then when they grab the mic, they want to get, get all, they want to get on fire. They want everybody to shout and dance and, and run and all of that. Now you've been sitting the whole service. So by the time you get up, the people are tired. They done been praising God all service and they saw you doing nothing. Now, when you get up, you want everybody to get a second win and, 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 and because you, you, I guess you, I guess you, I guess your fire is lit now that you got the, I guess the mic is your match. Okay. All right. I guess the, the mic is your match or your lighter. Get the mic, strike your match. <laughs> now you, woof. Now you ready to set the church on fire. The church is already on fire. But the priest is supposed to be able to lead the people. And uh, so we thank the Lord for this segment tonight. I pray that you all was blessed by the segment tonight. And um, I just pray that you all will continue to have a God bless rest of the night and a wonderful rest of the week. And uh I thank God for all of the blessings and all of the all of the testimonies and thank you all for sharing the videos and just tuning in tonight, sharing your comments and your your testimonies. I, I didn't get a chance to read everything because a lot of the stuff is not popping up on the screen um, again because I, I lost signal in the beginning, but it's all good. So um I thank God for each and every one. Those that weren't able to catch the beginning, please go back and catch the beginning of the segment when I go off to live and let it bless your life, man. Let it bless your life. I thank God for each and every one of you for your prayers, your support, taking time out of your busy schedule to hang out with your boy, AGA. To God be the glory. And I pray blessings upon each and every one of you, all of you that are doing ministry that are that are preaching and, and teaching the word of God. My prayers are with you guys, my brothers and sisters. Continue to keep up the good work for the Lord that he may get the glory. Lives may be changed. All right. I pray blessings upon you, man. Your ministries, your businesses, your families, whatever is connected to you. Blessings be upon you. All right. Y'all continue to pray for me. Continue to pray for the Lemons Temple. Again, pray for my family. Um, we had death in the family. So continue to pray for the Raymond family, the Kears family, and the Austin family. Um, um, my cousin, they uh, laid my cousin to rest on yesterday. And so please continue to pray for my Aunt Betty. Amen. Um, she is my mother's sister. She wanted my mother's sister and her son, Amen. She lost her son and uh, he was 
Uh, his home going service was yesterday. And so continue to pray for, for, for my family and my mom, my aunts, my uncles, my cousins. Just pray for us all and just keep us lifted up. Um, and, and please especially pray for my Aunt Betty, uh, that God would give her the strength to uh, go on um, in the days ahead. He would comfort her and take her through um, this time of grieving and mourning and bereavement. Thank you, brother. Thank you, brother Davez. Thank you, DB3. I appreciate that. And uh, I will pass those words of prayers and condolences on to the family and let them know that you all, back to the Bible, uh, family and friends, you are sending up prayers for my family. And I will be sure to pass that on to the family and let them know that you guys are lifting us up. So thank you guys for your prayers. Continue to be to be encouraged and check us out on uh, Wednesday nights, uh, uh, Deliver to the Worship in Greensboro. We're in that powerful series entitled The Role of a Leader and the Responsibility of the Church. And God has really been blessing us. You can go to our page, check out all the videos, Sunday morning, uh, Wednesday nights, whatever. You can just check it all out. And uh, and um, I'm praying that uh, and also check out all the other brothers and sisters, DB3, Pastor Derek Murray, Rescue Temple 2, Brother Allen Williams, uh, Kingdom Connections with the House of Hope Worship Center down in Lexington. We got so many more. Check out all those uh, who are doing ministry online. Y'all support these brothers and sisters. Y'all doing a great job. The fellowship is continuing. And that's all we can ask for, guys. Amen. Again, you know, uh, together we can do more than we can apart. All right. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. For it's like the oil that runs down the head, down to the beard, and even down to the garments. And we want that oil to continue to flow, all right? Next week, we're coming back, guys. Part three, we're coming back. Man, I'm telling you, this is a great segment thus far. This is the second second part. Man, we having some good times. You hear me? <laughs> Y'all continue to have a God-blessed week. You too, Shonda. You continue to have a God-blessed week. You all... Thank you, Davez. Continue to have a God-blessed week. You all be blessed, be safe, be productive in everything you do. Lord willing, I'm looking forward to seeing you all back here next Monday night at 7 p.m. If you didn't get a chance to check out the Midday Monday Nugget with Mr. Favor, please do so as well. Let it bless your life. All right, guys, this is AGA, and I'm reporting live for the Heavenly News representing back to the Bible, a ministry of the Livers Temple Worship Center Greensboro, better known as DTWC Greensboro. You know how we do it. That's DTWC style. All right. Y'all continue to be blessed. I love y'all. I'm praying for you till we meet again. Sanctify yourself. Consecrate yourself. All right. Represent the kingdom so that the presence of God can be among you. All right. Be blessed, y'all. This is AGA. I'm out of here. Peace.